Good afternoon, family of God. Hey, it's your brother, Apostle G. Hightower, coming in on this awesome, tenacious Tuesday afternoon. And I came, family, <clears throat> excuse me, specifically to give you an encouraging word today. I want to speak specifically to the builders, those of you who are visionaries, the dreamers, not people who just have a dream and aren't working toward the fulfillment of that dream, but those of you who are like me, you have a dream and you are taking steps consistently to see that vision, that dream come to fruition. I want to encourage you today, family, that those of us who are um, on the pathway of purpose and God has given you something great on the, he's placed on the inside of you, but seemingly uh, in various arenas that you've gone to and in your endeavors to tap into certain networks that are necessary for your growth, expansion and development, uh, you've been overlooked. And if you've ever been at a place where you've been overlooked on a consistent basis, where you've been uh, your gifts, your talents, your time even has been not only overlooked, but you've been downright excluded. I want to encourage you today. Hey, Heather, good to see you, dear. Blessings on you. Good to see you. Listen, I want to encourage you today because uh, this is all a part of the process, although it is a painful part of the process. But I came to encourage a few people on this broadcast today to let you know that even though you have felt excluded, even though you have felt overlooked, even though at times you may have been downright ostracized, I came to let you know that it doesn't mean that God is not with you. I just need you to understand. Bless you, Willie McDaniel. I see you, brother. I just need you to understand, family, that God is still with you. And I want to give you some awesome words of encouragement today that will help keep you pushing down the pathway of purpose. Listen, I need you to hit that share button right there. Let's go. Let's get some people in on the broadcast, y'all, because we got to help some people today. Because what we do not want to do, as we are now on the seventh day of the 12th month of 2021, 23 days, 24 days remaining in the year of 2021, what I do not want you to do, ladies and gentlemen, is give up. I do not want you to allow discouragement to settle in on you where you throw in the towel on your dream, where you put your vision, your dreams, your ideas on the back burner. And you do that because you feel like you've been overlooked. You do that because you feel like you're being excluded from being connected to the right people that can get you to the next level. I know a lot of us faith people, we feel like we can get there on our own, but, but there's no man, there's no woman who's ever accomplished anything great that got there all by themselves. You do need some help. You do need to be connected to the right people, but it is important that you keep yourself fueled with faith regarding your vision. Hey, Carol King, I see you. Listen, so hit that share button. Let's drop some names in the comment section, family. Let's get some people in on the broadcast because I want to encourage a few people today. Um, I don't have a lot of time, but I'm certainly going to give you all the time that I do have for this segment. And then we'll be back tonight for Third Watch Prayer Force. We'll be back tonight, midnight Eastern. Um, no, I'm not midnight Eastern tonight. We'll be on actually tonight at... We'll be on a little bit later for the third watch tonight. We're going to come in tonight um, at about 1.30 a.m. tonight. OK, so we'll be praying tonight from 1.30 a.m. to 3 a.m. from 1.30 a.m. to 3 a.m. tonight. All right. Um, so listen, get ready, get ready, get ready, because God is certainly going to bless us during the third watch segment of tonight. Of course, for those of you that don't know, the third watch of the night is between midnight and 3 a.m. So we'll be on a little bit later tonight, but it's going to be powerful nevertheless. All right. So listen, um, I'll give about another minute or two, give people a chance to get onto the broadcast. Minister Annette, blessings to you. Thanks for coming in. I'll give people another minute or two to get connected and then we're going to go ahead and get started. You all know I don't like to waste a lot of time, um, even though we want to give people time to come on. This is kind of a pop up. I wasn't expected to come on, uh, but I've been sitting here 
um, just having my own personal time with God for about the last hour or two. And he dropped this word in my spirit. So I thought it was important to come on and share it, especially again, for those of us who are builders, those of us who are entrepreneurs, those of you who are climbing the corporate ladder, those of you who are in ministry and you've been serving for years. Oh my God, I really want to encourage you today. You've been serving for years faithfully and somehow you've been overlooked. Somehow you felt excluded. I want to encourage you today that even though you have felt overlooked, even though you have felt excluded or ostracized, I want to encourage you today that God is still with you. God is on your side. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. All right. So I'm waiting for a second or two. Um, I see our Wi-Fi connection is good. Yay. Um, all right. Yes. All right. Yes. Come on, Miss Delana. Next year is your year. Yes. I need a few people full of faith to declare that 2022 is my year. Now, Miss Delana, I'm going to hold you to that because I want to see you within the next 90 days. I want to see some major shifts happening for you, Miss Delana. I want to see some major shifts happening for you, Brother Willie. I want to see some major shifts happening for you, Heather, Miss Annette, Miss Carol. I want to see some major shifts happening for the people of God. Listen, I promise you, you're going to see a spiritual, a physical shift in your brother, Apostle G. I promise you, you're going to see a major shift happening within me. You all will be able to witness it. Because, you know, my grandmother always said that the eyes are the window to the soul. So even as I am praying with you and teaching you here online, you'll be able to see the shift with me. All right. I won't even tell you what it is. You all will be able to tell me what it is. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Good stuff, Heather. I love that. All right. So listen, let's jump into it, family. I want to be respectful to your time. Thank you so much for joining me here on the broadcast. And, uh we do want to give people time to get in, but at the same time, I want to respect your time because you all are here. So thank you so much. And as I'm praying, I'm going to open up real quickly with a word of prayer. I'm going to ask you to at least drop seven names, at least drop seven names or five names, y'all. Let's just do five. I need you to drop at least five names in the comment section. What I want you to do, bless you, Carolette. What I want you to do, family, make sure you drop their names in the comment section as their name appears on their Facebook page. That will essentially tag them and bring them to the broadcast, all right? All right, thank you so much, family. Y'all can do that while I'm praying. So Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you today. And we come before you today, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, first of all, God, for blessing us with your presence here. We thank you, Spirit of God, for what you are about to do and manifesting your power, manifesting your glory, my God in heaven. God, we thank you for your presence is already here, God. We feel your anointing, God. Hallelujah. So we celebrate you, oh God. We honor your presence on this broadcast. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to have total preeminence on this broadcast. God, permeate this broadcast with your love. Permeate this broadcast with your peace. And thank you, God, for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation today. God, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened and that you may give us instruction and everything that we need to succeed. Some of us, God, have been overlooked for years and we're tired of being overlooked. Some of us have been excluded for years and we're tired of feeling excluded and ostracized. So God, I thank you for this season of preparation for elevation. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat while I'm praying. It's my elevation time. It's my elevation time. It's my elevation time. Come on, make it personal. It's my elevation time. It's my elevation time. God, I thank you. Oh, Shabaya. Yes, God. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost on this broadcast. God, I thank you for this season of preparation for elevation, God. Show us the steps we need to take so that we are in alignment with your will, God, so that we are not moving prematurely, nor are we stagnant and procrastinating and moving behind you. God, we want to be right in sync with you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So thank you, Father, for doing a new thing in us. Thank you for a mindset shift. Thank you for transforming us by the renewing of our minds, oh God, so that we are prepared for the season of elevation. We love you. We bless you. And we give you glory this day, my God, in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. And everybody who's ready for the season of elevation, 
shout glory. Amen. 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 Bless you, Miss Angelia. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in, Miss Juanita. Blessings on you. All right, let's go, y'all. Let's get it. I'm going to do my best. Uh, bless you, Miss Lynette. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in and sharing. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing, Heather. I appreciate you. Glory be to God. All right, Willie. Willie says, I'm praying that I'll be in Texas. Amen. Coming up. All right. Good stuff, man of God. I'm going to stand with you. That the will of the Lord be done for you in that regard. Amen. 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 All right. So um, I'm going to ask you all to travel with me in the scripture to the book of First Samuel, chapter number 17. Uh, Tamara, good to see you, dear. Blessings on you. I'm going to ask you all to travel with me in the scripture to the book of First Samuel, chapter number 17. And um, there's quite a bit of reading here to do. Um, so I'm only going to take us through the first part. Hey, Kenosha, good to see you, dear. Blessings on you. I'm only going to take us through the first part, family. Um, well, let's see. How about we go as far as we can? How about that? Because I really always like to feel a sense of completion. I don't want to stop and uh, only leave. I don't want to stop and give y'all a Holy Ghost cliffhanger. Uh, I don't I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> so uh, we'll go as far as we can. Um, maybe, why don't I do this? Why don't I do this? Here we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God always gives us wisdom. Here we go. Here's how we'll do this. Um, we will begin first, uh, travel with me, family, first Samuel chapter number 17. And if you all can get some note taking materials, cause I promise you, Holy Spirit is going to speak to you and give you some awesome words of wisdom and direction for your life. As we read through this text, first Samuel chapter number 17 is where we're going to be reading from today. Family of God, first Samuel chapter number 17. All right. Um, yeah. So the Holy Spirit just gave me wisdom. So I'm going to minimize the text and what I was going to read because I wanted to give you a good volume of text uh, from the scripture to read, Carolette, um, because I do realize that a lot of us are busy, especially those of us who are corporate people, those of us who have long commutes and those of us who are entrepreneurs. We have long hours during this during the day. Hey, Pastor Ella, that's right. It is your elevation time. And so a lot of us are just not investing the time to read the word of God as much as we should. Amen. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. A lot of us are just simply not investing the amount of time that we need to in reading the word of God. So whenever you all join me and whenever we come together or whenever I'm in a physical service or a virtual service, I always like to make sure that we take uh, uh, an ample amount of time, a proper amount of time and read the word of God uh, is so important, family of God, because the word of God is the fuel for our spirit man. Amen. As Jesus says in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Prophetess Lydia, blessings on you, dear. Good to see you. All right. So let's go. First Samuel chapter number 17 is where we're reading from. And I'm going to begin reading today, family, uh, for the sake of time. I'm going to begin reading at verse number. Uh, let's see. Yeah. For the sake of time, I'll kind of minimize the text instead of reading the volume amounts, uh, the volume in this amount of scripture that I was going to read. Um, I will go ahead and uh, kind of minimize that amount of scripture. All right. So um, let us begin reading at verse number 12. All right. Uh, matter of fact, I really I really want you to catch this because I need you to catch the, the spirit and the energy of this. All right. So Y'all follow me through the scripture. First Samuel chapter number 17. This is a great story, family. And this is not a myth. This is not mythology. This is not, hey, Stacy, good to see you. Uh, this is not like, you know, King Zeus and, you know, uh, uh, Hercules and all of those Greek gods. This is not mythology, okay? It's not Greek mythology. This is real life stuff. Just as true as George Washington was the first president of the United States, just as true as Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. And that is true history. The story of David and Goliath is true history, family. It is true biblical history, and that is applicable for all of our lives, all right? So we're going to just kind of 
go through the scripture uh, expeditiously. Uh, Prophet Judah, love you, brother. Trisha, good to see you. All right. So we're going to go through the scripture expeditiously. And I want to help you capture the energy and the spirit of this text so we can take it in and apply the word to our own lives. All right. Let's go. First Samuel chapter number 17. And we're beginning at verse number four. And the Bible says, then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Now this is so phenomenal family. Here's a giant Goliath who's over nine feet tall family. And he, uh, uh, even though this giant was seemingly undefeatable, he still had an armor bearer with him. Bless you, Pastor Galan. Good to see you, dear. I miss you. I hope all is well. Uh, listen, so here it is. Goliath got all this armor on, even the tip of his spearhead. Prophet Judah, prophetess Tawana weighs 25 pounds. Just the tip of his spearhead weighs 25 pounds because of how heavily it was crafted and put together. And then on top of all of this armor that he has on, including a coat of mail, a coat of armor that weighed 125 pounds by itself. And he's got an armor bearer and all of that to face the forces of Israel. Listen to this. And the Bible says, family of God, that Goliath stood. We're in verse eight of first Samuel 17. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. My God in heaven. Listen, have y'all shared the broadcast yet? Come on, hit that share button, family. Listen, we got to encourage some people today because there are some people, Galan, Prophetess Tawana, there are some people who are on the verge of quitting, who are on the verge of giving up, who are just like the children of Israel looking at Goliath. They were terrified and deeply shaken. Some of us have looked at the magnitude of the call of God on, your, on our lives. We've looked at the magnitude of the vision that God has placed inside of us, the dream that God keeps allowing us to have, this recurring dream we keep having over and over and over again. And we're looking at the magnitude of it. And it looks like a giant that we cannot defeat. My God in heaven. But I need a few people who are full of faith to drop this in the chat that I will be victorious. I will be victorious. Come on, Lisa. Let's go. Listen, in fact, I need you to declare by faith. I am victorious. Come on. I'm not going to allow this giant to stand in my way and impede my progress anymore. I'm not going to continue to allow myself to be overlooked and me feel small, like I'm not good enough, like I'm not strong enough, like I'm not talented enough to do this great work that God has called me to do. No, sir. No, ma'am. You got me all the way twisted. I am victorious. And this giant that's standing in front of me, I'm about to slay that joker. Come on, Delana, I need a few people. Come on, Pastor Ella. I need a few people that drop, that'll drop drop this in the chat, Brother Willie. I'm a giant slayer. I'm a giant slayer. I'm a giant slayer. I'm about to slay the giant. Come on, let's go, Mona. I will be victorious. In fact, I am victorious right now. Glory be to God. Come on, Fonda, where you been, dear? I miss you. I pray all is well with you and your family. Come on, Lady Valencia, let's get it. I am victorious. I'm, I'm victorious right now. Come on. The Bible tells us, family, in Romans chapter 8, that we are more than conquerors. Not I'm trying to be a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Glory be to God. Come on, Prophet Judah. I'm a giant slayer. I'm about to slay some giants up in here tonight. Let's go. Look at the word of God. So the Bible tells us, family of God, 
that the children of Israel saw King Saul, who's supposed to be the mighty warrior, who is the leader of all of Israel. He and all the Israelites, which also included King David, uh, uh, the future king, which also included David's brothers. David's brothers were in Saul's army, but all of them were terrified and deeply shaken. Look at this family. We're in 1 Samuel 17. For those of you that just joined us, the Bible says here in verse 12, now David was the son of a man named Jesse. All right. And David was the eighth brother. He was the little brother of all of Jesse's sons. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army. But David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. Look at this family. Verse 16. For 40 days, every morning and every evening, the Philistine champion strutted his stuff in front of the children of Israel. Listen, Donna B, bless you, dear Tabby. Listen, for 40 days and 40 nights, the, the, the champion of Gath, Goliath, strutted his stuff in front of the children of Israel. Yeah, y'all fools ain't about nothing. Y'all ain't got nothing on me. What, y'all gonna come get some or what? Come get some. Come get some of this. And if you beat me, if you kill me, then we and all the, all the Philistine army, we will bow down and serve y'all as slaves. But if I kill your champion, y'all gonna have to bow down and serve us as slaves. Listen to this, Tabby. Watch this. This is gonna help some people in here today. So the Bible says uh, that David went down one day to check out what was really going on. <laughs> Listen to this family of God. The Bible says uh, uh, in verse 22, David left his things with the keeper of supplies, hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Oh, my God. Have you seen the giant? The men ask. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldier standing by, what will a man get for killing, killing this Philistine and ending his defiance to Israel? Look at this family of God. So David wants to know what the reward is going to be. Look at this. Skip down to verse 28. The Bible says in verse 28, when David's oldest brother Eliab heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and your deceit. You just want to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? I was only asking a question. And he walked over to some of the others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. David's question was reported to King Saul and King Saul sent for him. Listen, I need you to understand, family of God, that whenever God has you in a situation where you, Trisha, when you, Tabby, Prophet Judah, when you are being prepared for a season of elevation, my God, somebody drop this in the chat, preparation for elevation, preparation for elevation. Whenever God has you in a season of preparation, for elevation, you've got to understand that there are going to be some people who have been sent by the devil to get you distracted and or discouraged. And here's the key. And this one right here hurts, Mona. It's not going to be the usual suspects who are used by the enemy to discourage you. It's going to be some of the people closest to you who will be sent by the enemy to discourage you. My God in heaven. I hope we're helping a few people on this broadcast, Tawana, uh, Lady Valencia. Listen to this. Willie, it's oftentimes not the people who are working against us on the outside, but somebody dropped this in the chat. Dream killers is an, is an inside job. Dream killers are, are an inside job. It's the people around me that the enemy will use to come against me to kill my dream. My God in heaven. 
Oh, my God in heaven. I felt that deep in my spirit when I just spoke that. My God in heaven. I need a few people to understand, family of God, that it was David's brother. And I submit to you, family, let me throw this little plot. This is not conspiracy theory. Uh, theory. This is the truth. Because if you go back uh, in the previous chapters of 1 Samuel, you'll see that when the prophet Samuel came on assignment, Lisa, Lady Valencia, when the prophet Samuel came on assignment to anoint the next king of Israel, because God had spoken to prophet Samuel and told him the next king of Israel is in Jesse's house. Now, Samuel did not know which one of Jesse's sons was going to be the one. And, but he looked at all of Jesse's sons, and then he finally looks at Eliab, the oldest brother. Eliab is well built. He's about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, biceps, triceps, pecs going on, got that wavy hair, you know what I'm saying? Probably got them hazel eyes. <laughs> the brother had a bad old chariot sitting, on, sitting outside, gold-plated chariot sitting on 24s. <laughs> Eliab had it going on. And so Samuel was so impressed with Eliab. Samuel says, oh, snap, here's the next king of Israel. Eliab, yeah, boy, you strapping young man, nice, tall looking gentleman. <laughs> Listen, watch this. And 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 Eliab, uh, uh, Samuel's looking Eliab up and down and Eliab just strutting like a peacock. You know, yeah, yeah, I'm the one. Didn't you see me featured in Jerusalem's front page? <laughs> the Jerusalem Chronicles. I was on the front page. And listen at this. Look, this is Dr. G's urban version of the text, by the way, family. Uh, 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 and so now here it is. So. So Samuel is looking at Eliab and Eliab is strutting like a peacock and the spirit of God speaks to uh, prophet Samuel. He says, uh-uh, don't be looking at him like he's the one. He's not the one. I have refused him already. Uh -huh. Man looketh on the outward appearance. Here's what God spoke to prophet Samuel. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God is always looking at the heart. Come on, Mona. Can I give it to y'all like this? Man is always looking for what is impressive on the outside. God is looking for what's effective on the inside. My God in heaven. Teach, High Tower, teach. Listen, I came to let a few people know today that even though there are a lot of people who are ahead of you, my God in heaven, this is a word from some, for somebody today, because there are other people who are moving faster than you. They're already developing their things. They're already getting their stuff done. They've already started their business. Uh-oh, let me throw this curveball. They already got married. They already became engaged. And you still sitting back here trying to figure out how to get your business done. You still sitting here single as a jaybird wondering where's your purpose partner at come on brothers some of us are still out here like the shy lights talking about have you seen her tell me have you seen her i'm looking for where my wife is where is she come on ladies you're still waiting to be found you're still waiting to get connected to your purpose partner where is that man of god who god showed me that we're going to be purpose partners that we're going to be a power couple for the kingdom where is that man and you're looking at other ladies around you and they're getting engaged come on they already got a wedding date plan some of your friends are going to get married during the holidays and you still sitting here saying hamburger. God, when is it my time? But I need a few people to be encouraged today and not discouraged that God has not forgotten about you. And even though people may choose to overlook you, God has got you on the forefront of his mind. And God says, daughter, son, this is your time. This is your season. I have you in this place of preparation for elevation. I I just need you to continue to believe. Do not give up. Do not quit. Do not allow discouragement to sit on you and make you give up. Let us not grow weary in well-doing for in due season, which means God's appointed time. At God's appointed time, we shall reap a harvest of blessings if we do not quit. Listen at this now. I see my brother, Bishop Kilpatrick in the building. Blessings on you, Bishop, you and Lady Bridget. Watch this, family of God. So here, uh, uh, Eliab is sitting up here taking, uh, 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 getting angry at 
uh, his brother David. And I submit to you that part of this anger, this hostility that's coming out against his little brother David is because he realized that way back in the day, just a little while ago in the previous chapters, prophet Samuel anointed him with oil and not Eliab. That David is to be the next king of Israel and not Eliab. That David is going to be the one reigning in the royal palace and not Eliab. So here he comes, Miss Nita. He's feeling some kind of way against David. And here's what you've got to understand, men and women of God, that when God has you in a season of preparation for elevation, I need you to understand, Prophet Judah, that others around you, Bishop Kilpatrick, can see God's grace, can see God's favor, can see the oil of anointing that rests on your life. Even when you don't believe it for yourself, Mona, even when you don't believe it for yourself, Lavora, even when you don't believe it yourself, God puts it in the, God has his, his light is so bright on your life that even when you don't believe it, Donna B, other people can see it. My God in heaven, who are we helping on this broadcast? And so now here is what uh, uh, is challenged with, with David because David is incensed, Carol King. He is feeling angry, righteous indignation about the fact that this Philistine, this uncircumcised joker got the audacity to come against the armies of God. Because see, here's what you got to understand about Israel, family of God. It was already known throughout all the land that Israel was God's chosen people. And so David is feeling some kind of way because see, David, what I love about David, David had a millennial-like mentality. See, what I love about millennials, millennials, they ain't about to take nothing off of you. <laughs> and some of us who are of the X generation and those who are of the baby boomer generation, y'all kind of got an issue with the millennials because you said they need to wait their turn. It ain't their time yet. Oh, no, sir. No, ma'am. It is their time. Yes, they have to be taught. Yes, they have to have a certain level of God's grace on them so they can know how to properly exercise their gifts, talents and abilities. But it is their time. And listen, what they're not going to do, they're not going to take down and take back and allow the enemy to slander us and make us feel we're defeated when we are God's choice of chosen people. We are his royal priesthood. We are his peculiar special people who have been handpicked by God for greatness. And so David had a mindset where he says, uh-uh, this, uh, this joke ain't about to punk us. Y'all excuse the expression. He ain't about to punk us. Who do he think he is? Listen to this, family of God. So the Bible says here, family, we're in 1 Samuel 17 and in verse 32, here's David. David says, don't worry about this Philistine. David told King Saul, I'll go and fight him. King Saul said, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my daddy's sheep and his goats. And when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I will go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. And if the animal turns on me, I catch that joker by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I will do the same thing to this pagan, un uncircumcised Philistine too, because he has defied the armies of the living God. And the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will also rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead then, boy. <laughs> and may the Lord be with you. <laughs> Listen, King Saul, come on, come on, Bishop Kilpatrick. David was a gangster. Come on, listen. David was a straight up G. He says, listen, uh, 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 King Saul, I don't mean no disrespect, but what we are not going to do, we are not going to sit here and let this pagan Philistine who worships false gods come against us and tell us that we're going to have to bow down to them and become their slaves. They got us all the way twisted. So I will go out and fight him. And the same God that blessed me to kill the lion and the bear will also deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah, he about to get it. Watch this. So now, so now watch this. Let me help a few people here. 
This is the mindset that you have to have as a visionary. This is the mindset you have to have as a dreamer, as an entrepreneur. This is the mindset you have to have as a leader. This is the mindset you have to have as an inventor, as an author, as an artist. This is the mindset, especially those of you that are in the artist, in the industry, and you're trying to make your way. My God in heaven, this is a word for somebody. Glory be to God. This is a word for somebody at 514, amen, on the seventh day in the 12th month. I need you to understand that God has called you. The reason why you've been keep hitting brick walls, you keep hitting barriers that are uh, that seemingly are insurmountable for you to overcome. I need you to understand that even though the industry heads and key people of influence have seemingly overlooked you and have tried to minify the significance of your ability. I need you to understand that even though it seems like you've been overlooked, God didn't just allow you to be overlooked. He allowed you to be overlooked so that you would keep pressing forward by faith. And because you've been overlooked by those people, God is going to cause you to pioneer your own movement. My God in heaven. My God in heaven, who are we helping on this broadcast? God says, I'm about to cause you to pioneer your own pathway. Mm -mm. No, sir, because I purposely, I intentionally did not allow you to get connected with that group or that group or that organization or that particular business group. Why? Because I didn't want them to steal my glory, God says. I didn't want them to take the credit for your success. So I had to allow you to go the rough way around. Come on, Marsha. Listen, I had to allow you, Mona, to come the rough way around. Mm -hmm. Listen, I had to allow you, Lisa, to come through a way that nobody would see you coming. Come on. Listen, how many of y'all are on Instagram? You follow Country Wayne. Listen, everybody else started going through the ways of Hollywood to try to get into their acting career and try to get their comedy skits accepted and try to build their own uh, uh, platform for comedy. Guess what? Country Wayne uh, with a K, Country Wayne built his platform on Instagram doing his own little skits. And guess what? Country Wayne is a multimillionaire right now. And he did it the way that nobody expected him to do it. He did it his own way. He became a pioneer in this field. And now he's making millions. And instead of him having to go stand in line to audition in Hollywood, Hollywood is knocking on his door. Hollywood is calling him. Come on. And guess what? The brother's making millions with necklaces and, 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 and shirts and hats talking about Jesus is popping. <laughs> He's making Jesus famous. Come on. And when you make God's name great, Bishop Kilpatrick, God will make sure that he makes your name great. My God in heaven. Jesus said, I feel a Holy Ghost Baptocostal AME Church of God in Christ anointing on me today. Listen, uh, Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. I'll draw all men unto me through you, through your gifts, through your talents, through your products, through your services. If you make me famous, God says, I'll make sure that what you do becomes famous. My God in heaven, who are we helping on this broadcast? God says, don't worry about it. You may have been overlooked at the first beginning, at the second season, after the third season. But if you will persist until you succeed, God says, I'm going to set you up. Not allow you to fall flat and suffer from a setback. I'm going to help you use that setback for a setup for a comeback. Look at David. Come on. Let me finish this text because we got to go. Look at the word, family. First Samuel 17. And the Bible says, family of God, that Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on. He strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like because he had never worn this kind of armor before. He had never put on armor before. And David said, I can't go in this because I ain't used to this. And David took it all off. Verse 40 of 1 Samuel 17, David picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. And armed only with a shepherd's staff and a slingshot, he started across the valley to the Philistine. Somebody drop this in the chat. Bishop, I want you to go and preach this because you can preach it better than me, Bishop. I want you to drop this in the chat. 
We don't wait on our enemies. We take the fight to the enemy. Somebody drop that in the chat. Take the fight to the enemy. Take the fight to the enemy. Take the fight to the enemy. I ain't about to sit back here and wait on you to attack me. I'm going to get you first. <laughs> Come on. I know y'all think that 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 awesome anointed brother Joby wrote that song. Try Jesus, but don't try me because I throw hands. David is one that wrote that song first. <laughs> Try Jesus, but please don't try me because I not only lay hands, Francesca, I throw hands. Oh, y'all ain't going to shout. OK, listen, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Look at the word. Look at the word. So the Bible says, Lisa. So the Bible says, Tawana, watch this. So the Bible says David took the fight to the enemy. And verse 41, Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy faced boy. Am I a dog that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and I'm going to cut your head off. Then I'm going to give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Listen, family, let me say this real quick to those of you who are awesome warriors, those of you who are inventors and creatives, authors and inventors. I want to bless you here. It's always important, family, that we do not allow ourselves to get puffed up with pride. The Bible says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit goes before a fall. It's so important, family, that even when you are engaged in battle, even when you are prepared for the fight, and you are engaged in spiritual warfare. It's so important that we keep ourselves humble and that we don't get too puffed up. Don't become so self-confident and overconfident that you allow yourself to get out of the will of God or remove yourself from the grace of God. All right. Let me talk to a few people here. I want to talk to a few of you leaders, because a lot of times, family, we can lose. Watch this. We can lose a battle, Francesca, that God ordained for us to win. But because of pride, we got a little too puffed up Too, we became too self-confident. We didn't stay humble. And even the battle that we should have won, we end up losing because pride got in the way. Oh, I'm helping somebody today. Listen. Listen, watch this, Bishop. Watch this, Lisa. So now I want to encourage you to make sure that you stay humble. All right. This is the beauty of what David did. All right. Now, he was bold and confident in what God had called him to do. Yes. But he did not become self-confident. And this is what I love about David. This is one, one of the reasons why God says David was a man after his own heart, because everything you see here, what David is saying to Goliath is all about God and the children of Israel. Watch this. David responds to Saul, uh, to uh, Goliath, and he tells him, he says, listen, uh, uh, listen, not only are we going to be victorious? But the whole world is going to know that you came up against the wrong one. You came up against the armies of God. You came up against the armies of Israel. And because God is with us, the whole world is going to know <laughs> that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, not with the sword and spear, because this is the Lord's battle and he will give you unto us. Listen to this, family of God. This is so powerful. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, Bishop Kilpatrick. And reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, Brother Daryl, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine straight up in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down to the ground. David triumphed over the Philistine with only a slingshot and a stone, for he had no sword. And David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath, and David used Goliath's sword to kill him and cut his head off. 
Listen, we got to go, family of God. I sure ain't got enough time to really keep going on this word. But listen, yeah, come on, uh, Bishop. He was King David gave Goliath a one hit a quitter. <laughs> Oh, y'all thought that came from baby boy. That came from King David. I need y'all to know everything y'all hear in, in pop culture and everything you hear in English, all these wonderful colloquialisms and stuff that we get. We got it from the word, y'all. All right. You seen the movie Baby Boy and say, yeah, give him the one hit a quitter. That came from David. Bye, Busting one time. Smack dab in the forehead. Kilty. <laughs> one hit a quitter. <laughs> y'all thought that came from the hood. That came from the word. Come on. Listen, listen, listen. Y'all thought y'all thought black people made up that saying talking about it's all good. It's all good. We got that from the word. Romans 8, 28. And we know all things work together for good. So instead of us, you know, because we always shorten things instead of us saying, oh, yeah, you know, all things work together for good. We just say, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, we got that from the word. Come on, y'all. Come on. Even the old saying, there's a whole there's multi-billion dollar corporation called Head and Shoulders Dandruff, right? That came from the word describing King Saul, that King Saul was head and shoulders above all the rest. Boom. Where do you think that came from? That came from the word. I'm trying to help y'all today. All right. I ain't got time for a history lesson. Listen, let me break it down like this because we got to go. Listen, I want to pray for a few people today because I got about 10 minutes left. I got to go for real, for real, y'all. I love you to life, but I came on simply to give a few people a word of encouragement today because I do not want you to quit. Again, we are 25 days remaining, uh, 24 days, 24 days remaining in 20. 21, Tabby. And I want to see some people married in 2022. I want to see some businesses happening in 2022. I want to see some homes acquired in 2022. I want to see some businesses birth. I want to see some books finished. I want to, I want to see some people starting their podcast show. Come on. I want to see people starting their television show. Hello, you waiting on the television network, baby, please. You better start your own TV show on YouTube and get it cracking. Don't you be waiting on the Bravo Network or TBS or Lifetime or the Food Network to get your TV show going. Baby, you start your show right now and put that joker up on YouTube and they'll be calling you to pay you money for what you're already doing. I shared this with you before. The anointing precedes the appointing. Stop waiting on man to appoint you to a work when God has already anointed you for the work. The anointing precedes the appointing. Y'all sitting around waiting on people. We ain't going to wait on people. Haven't you noticed you've been overlooked? Well, if you've been overlooked, then it's time for you to keep going with what God gave you. Because God has us in a season of preparation for elevation. God is getting ready to take you from being overlooked to elevated. My God in heaven, I hope we helping some people today. Bless you, Clarice. Bless you, prophetess. Kimmy, come on, let's go. I ain't going to be, listen, man, I'm not about to sit around and wait on nobody. I'm not waiting on nobody's preacher's network. I'm not waiting on nobody's word network. I ain't waiting on TBN, Daystar, God TV. I ain't waiting on the 700 Club to call me. I'm not waiting on nobody. I'm going to have my own show and they're going to be calling me. And I prophesy over my own life in Jesus name on this seventh day of the 12th month of 2021. I'm going to have my own shows, plural, and they will be calling me. The major networks will be calling me. Watch what I tell you. Tyler Perry started by doing his plays, creating his own content. Listen, he was broke as a joke. And even after doing his first production and doing everything he knew how to do to make it successful, it fell flat on its face. Tyler Perry was broke. He was sleeping in his car. But he kept on going. He persisted until he succeeded. And now everybody and their great grandmama are standing in line to work with him. Now, all the major, not all of them, but many of the major uh, 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 production companies in Hollywood are coming to Atlanta to film movies in his studio. Because Tyler Perry now has the largest studio in America. Did you hear what I said? The man who would just in 2003 were doing stage plays on the quote unquote Chitlin circuit. And a lot of y'all was talking about him today. He has the largest film studio in America. Hello. How you doing? He ain't calling nobody. People are calling him. Oh, and by the way, he's a billionaire with a B. God bless you. He's a billionaire with a B.
when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle decided that they were no gonna they were no longer going to allow the royal family of England to dictate how their life was going to be because the ro the royal family didn't like the fact that he married a black woman. Guess what? They left England. And shout out to Harry who loves his wife, adores his wife and said, "The royal family ain't going to make my wife feel like how my mama felt, Princess Di, who died prematurely. That that fate, that destiny will not be my wife's." So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave England and guess where they stayed for a long season while they were trying to figure out what were going to be their next steps. Tyler Perry let Prince Harry and Meghan Markle live in his house. Y'all ain't shouting. Y'all ain't shouting. Y'all ain't shouting. Hello. How you doing? Come on. How about God wants to prosper you to the degree? that you become such a powerful, anointed, wealthy world changer that world leaders will be coming to you for help instead of you going to them for help. But if that's ever gonna happen for you, you have got to graduate to the place that you no longer allow yourself to be restricted, restrained, or minimized in any way by people who continue to overlook you. David would have never stepped into his royal position. He would have never taken advantage of a powerful moment in history to defeat the giant Goliath if he had allowed the negative influence of his brother Eliab to cause him to walk away from this opportunity to do battle with and conquer Goliath. Who are you allowing close to you to negatively influence you, to feed your mind negativity, to speak word curses over your life and cause you to second guess the call of God on your life? It's time to let all that go. It's time to free your mind because if things are going to shift for you on the outside, there first must be a transformation on the inside. And I submit to you again, I said this earlier in the broadcast, Prophetess Clarice, it bears repeating, Donna B, Prophetess Lydia. Most often when the enemy wants to defeat you and you know that the battle is in the mind. So when the enemy wants to defeat us, it is not, Tiffany, the enemies that we have to look at externally. It's not the usual suspects, the people we already know don't like us, the people we already know who are jealous of us or envious of us. It is about Bishop Kilpatrick, the people closest to us who, because their lives are not consecrated, because their lives are not committed to the things of God, they become open vessels, excuse me, open vessel open vessels and susceptible to the enemy using them to come against us. From a military perspective, we call it friendly fire, that you can be injured or even killed by somebody who's on your side, somebody in your own camp. Hello? Let me throw this quick historical text and we're going to pray. President John F. Kennedy was killed. November 22nd, 1963 in Dallas, Texas. To this day, that case has never been solved. Yes, famously, historically, they said Lee Harvey Oswald did it, but anybody with good common sense and knows anything about ballistics can clearly see there's no way on God's green earth that that one man did all that shooting that because President Kennedy was the only one shot who was in that car. Other people were injured in that car and President Kennedy was shot multiple times. There's no way that that one man with one rifle did all of that damage. The case has never been reopened. To this day, the case has not been officially solved. In fact, it is a known fact 
that the case, the, the evidence of the case has been sealed until the year of 2035. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that somebody had the power to say, we're closing the case and all documents and all evidence will be sealed until the year 2035, never to be re reopened until then. I submit to you, it was not Russian forces who sent this spy in named Lee Harvey Oswald to kill the president of the United States. It was not the enemies on the outside. It was the enemies on the inside. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you today. I thank you for these awesome men and women of God whom you have called, whom you have chosen before the foundations of this world. I thank you for their lives, oh God. I thank you, Father, because um, one thing is sure, that if there's ever going to be any level of consistent success, any level of consistent success, God. It's going to happen because you, oh God, have ordained our success and that we have persisted through the fire, through self-doubt, through the toxic talk, through word curses spoken against us, spoken over our lives. God, that we will persist past it all to succeed in what you have called us to do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray for it. Thank you, uh, man of God. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, prophetess. Thank you so much for sowing. Um, I didn't ask for that, but um, thank you so much. I really came on just to encourage a few people today. Glory be to God. Bless you. Thank you so much. Listen, I want to pray for a few people right now. I only got a few minutes left, family. So I want to pray for a few people real quick um, before we go. Thank you so much, family. Those of you who sowed, those of you that are sowing, all the information is at the bottom of the screen. If you want to give by way of PayPal, Cash App, or Zelle, you certainly may do that. That is not the purpose of me coming on, but I wanted to make that available for those who are sowing because I always get beat up by uh, some of my awesome extended family members here. Says, Dr. G, you didn't tell the people about giving. You didn't give us a chance to sow. So all the information is at the bottom of the screen if you want to give by way of PayPal, Zelle, or Cash App. Now, let me focus on what my assignment is, which is to give you a word and to pray for the people of God. I want to pray for a few people. I want to pray specifically for one group of people right now. There are people that you know it has come to you over and over again. You know that these people are close to you, but they are working against you. At the very least, they may not be doing anything maliciously, but they constantly are speaking negatively in your ear, literally speaking word curses into your ear that goes against the plan of God for your life. I want to pray for you right now. Let me know if that's you. If that's you, I want to pray for you right now because I want to make sure that you are strengthened. Glory be to God, that you are strengthened by the word of God and strengthened by prayer to overcome these obstacles in Jesus name. It is a satanic attack. Do not get it twisted. I do not want you to keep taking this thing lightly because no matter how strong we are, family of God, listen, the scripture is very plain. Proverbs 18, 21, Miss Tricia, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life, DJ, are in the power of the tongue. So, Father, I thank you. I bless you, Lord God, for Tricia. I thank you, Father, for DJ. I thank you for Lydia. I thank you for Stacy. I thank you for my brother, Prophet Judah. I thank you for Zani. Zani, love you, dear. Good to see you. Father, I thank you for these awesome men and women of God whom you have anointed, whom you have hand-picked whom you have chosen before the foundations of the world. I bless you for their lives, oh God. I thank you for the vision that you've placed on the inside of them. And I pray, Holy Father, in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes. Amen, Prophetess Clarice. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless you, uh, Flame on Flicks. I don't know exactly what that handle means, but uh, bless you nevertheless. Thank you for coming in. Prophetess Clarice, I bless you. So Father, I thank you for strengthening um, my dear sister in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name, we break every chain, every word curse. God, we pull down the stronghold of the enemy in the name of Jesus by the power 
power that you placed in my life, God, the apostolic authority that you have given me, oh God, I thank you, Father. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that your people are victorious. Victorious. God, your word declares in Romans 8, 37, that we are more than conquerors. And so, Father, I bless you today. I give you glory. We pull down the strongholds of the enemy that, and that we break the word curses. We bind the spirit of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus that has perplexed our mind, put roadblocks over our minds and tried to make us feel like we will not succeed in what you've called us to do. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you have called us for such a time as this. And God, because we follow your plan, God, because we meditate on your word, God, because we spend time with you in the secret place, I thank you, Father, that we are guaranteed to succeed seed. And so, Father, I thank you right now. Yes, God. Satan, we command you to loose your hold. Spirit of fear, you've got to go. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us over again to the spirit of bondage to fear. So we come against the spirit of fear and we command you, Satan, to loose your hold even now in the name of Jesus. Fear doesn't belong to us. Doubt doesn't belong to us. We are the believers. We are the believers and we believe in your word, oh God, beyond our circumstances, beyond our surrounding situations. God, we trust in you and we believe your holy word. Thank you, Spirit of God, for doing a new thing in us, through us and for Yes, God, thank you for restoration. Yes, God, thank you for restoration. My God, we love you, Jesus. We bless you. Yes, God, I thank you, Father. I declare and decree victory in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I thank you right now, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. I thank you, Father. I bless you. Yes, my God. I honor you. I give you glory. Bishop, are you still here? Bishop Kilpatrick, I want to pray for you. With your permission, my dear brother, I want to pray for you uh, right now. Um, and Lady Bridget, with your permission, Bishop, if you're still here, Bishop Kilpatrick, let me know if you're still here. I'll be glad to pray for you, man of God. Um, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Miss Tricia, I want to pray for you. Um, if you'll give me permission, Ms. Patricia, I want to pray for you. Uh, bless you. Thank you so much, Prophetess. Abundant blessings to you in Jesus' name. Um, Ms. Tricia, I want to pray for you. Um, thank you, Spirit of God. Um, Tabby, I want to pray for you. Uh, Prophet Judah, I want to pray for you and your wife in Jesus' name. Um, glory be to God. Uh, Miss Stacy, I want to pray for you as well. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Um, Tiffany, 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 if you're still here, I want to pray for you. Um, all right. So let me take this order real quick. Um, uh, thank you, Miss Trisha. So I want to pray for Trisha. I want to pray in this order. I want to pray for Trisha.
All right. Bless the Lord. All right. I see you, Tiffany. Um, okay. I see you, Judah. Okay. Miss Patsy is asleep. All right. Well, we'll cover her anyway. It's all good. Hallelujah. Mm. So, Father, we thank you. We honor you. And we bless you, Lord God. And we come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for our standing the gap right now for Tricia. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, we bless you. Rosha Yes, God, we bless you. We honor you right now, sir. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Holy Father, in Jesus' name, that you would bless my dear sister. Thank you for the season of open doors. Yes, God. Thank you for strengthening her on the inside. Yes, God. Um, Miss Tricia, I just heard this word. It's so interesting. It's so funny. I don't think I've ever heard this word for anybody else, but I just heard this word for you, Miss Tricia. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Um, and I want to give you that, Miss Tricia, as I'm inspired, as I'm led to give you that, speak that into your life right now. Practice makes perfect. Now, uh, I want you to understand that perfect doesn't mean without mistakes. Perfect doesn't mean without flaws. Perfect from the Greek is the word teleos, T-E-L-E-I-O-S. And the word perfect from the Greek means to be fully mature and to be complete, lacking no defects. No defects, no defects. So in other words, there is a level of maturity and completion and wholeness to what God wants you to do, Miss Tricia. And so God is saying, daughter, if you will invest the time in continuing to work on and perfect your craft. God said he's going to put you in a position where what he has anointed and, and graced you to do, listen, it will be irrefutable. Nobody will be able to question. See, nobody will be able to question the level of excellence. And I'm not even sure, Miss Tricia, because I'm not sure if, if this is your first time on this broadcast, so I'm not sure at all about what you do. But I'm hearing the spirit of God saying for you, Miss Tricia, that there's a level of excellence that God has already graced you for. And when you continue to work on developing your craft, practice makes perfect. As you continue to work on your craft, which requires discipline, which requires sacrifice, as you continue to work on your craft, Miss Tricia, God is going to place you at such a level where what you do is unquestionable. It would be irrefutable. No, oh, hairstylist. Oh my God. Oh my God in heaven. Listen, Miss Tricia, God is going to open up doors for you and put you on a platform where what you do, it will be irrefutable. Nobody will be able to refute the fact that Trisha is one of the very best, period. Nobody will be able to say anything about it. Nobody will be able to dispute it because your work will speak for itself. Listen, I never get into a debate about with people. Oh, who's the best relationships counselor? Who's the best relationships teacher? Who's the best? I don't get into a debate with people, first of all, because I'm not in a competition with nobody. I'm working every day hard to be the best that I can be to serve God's people. But I know I'm graced and anointed to do things and speak things and teach things that others do not have. Number one, they don't have my set of experiences. Number two, they don't have the level of discipline and uh, to even dig deep and to get the revelation. Because you got to spend time with God to get the revelation. <laughs> revelation is not information that you can just get off of Google or YouTube. Revelation comes from spending time with the revelator who you can only get connection and intimate information while you're spending time in the secret place. It is not until you get, Trisha, in the crucible of solitude with God to understand what he wants you to do that will make you unique and will set you out far and above anybody who dares try to compete with you. You'll never have to try to compete with other people. All you got to do, Trisha, is be the best version of yourself that you can be. And others will always be trying to catch up to you. Others will always be trying to catch up to you. And by the time they catch up to you, Trisha, you'll already be on something different. <laughs> you'll already be on to the next and they'll be trying to catch up with the last thing you did. <laughs> so, Father, we thank you for Trisha. I thank you for the gifts and talents you've given her. Thank you, Father, for this season of preparation for elevation. She will no longer be overlooked. God, I thank you. My God in heaven. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Trisha, I don't know if this is something you have already or something you're working toward. I just heard this. God is preparing you to set you up with your own shop. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. I just heard this. Not only is he setting you up with your own shop, Miss Trisha, it's going to be a full full-fledged, uh, full-care service, uh, full-care service, kind of be like a, like a one-stop shop. 
um, not only for hair, but it's going to be a full fledged uh, personal care shop where people come and get just like whatever you need to beautify your situation. You need to come to Trisha's shop. You just you need to come to Trisha's shop. So, uh, Father, we thank you. We bless you for favoring your daughter. Thank you. Yes, God. Thank you for favoring your daughter and blessing her, oh God. Thank you that you will do, oh God, exceeding abundantly above all that she can ask or even think. Mm. According to your power, God, that works within her, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for my dear sister. Uh, bless you, Trisha, and I hope you receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for my dear sister, Prophetess Clarice. I bless you for her life. I pray for her father today. I pray for miraculous healing, swift recovery, and restoration, my God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for Prophetess Clarice that you would strengthen her also, Lord God. God, even as Joseph and David had jealous brothers around him. I thank you, Father, that even Clarice may have a jealous sister around her, but I thank you that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. Thank you, Father, that you would bless her to overcome the jealousy, the envy. You will help her to maintain a laser beam focus on the assignment you've given her. And God, in the end, you will bless Prophetess Clarice to be a blessing to that family. And the same ones talking about her today will be the same ones thanking her later. <laughs> Father, we bless you. I thank you that they will have a turnaround in their lives. They will come back. They will humble themselves and apologize for all the nasty things they said and did. In Jesus name, I thank you, Father. I bless you in Jesus name. Father, I thank you. Um, yes. Tabby, are you still here? Let me know, Tabby, if you're still here, I'll pray for you right now. Yep, 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 yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Miss Tabby, are you still here? All right. Y'all got to let me know now. Let me know because I'm moving quickly. Only got a couple of minutes left. All right. <clears throat> Father, I thank you and bless you for Miss Tabby. I bless you for her life, Father. Thank you that you strengthen her on the inside. Thank you, God, for making clear for your daughter, Tabby making clear your plan, your purpose for her life, God. God, I rebuke and cast down every distraction in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Um, Miss Tabby, I just see this vision right now. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever seen a building or a house, a beautiful structure, and on the sides of that house or that structure, there are vines, weeds crawling up the sides of it crawling up the sides of it. Amen. Good stuff, Prophetess Clarice. Good stuff. See, we know God is still in the miracle working business. We know God is still in the miracle working business. So, uh, Tabby, I want you to envision this. It's uh, like I literally see this. It's a white building, like a house or a building. And then there are green weeds, vines crawling up all on the sides of it. And I want you to see this, Tabby, because this when I'm it, it, just seeing this as I begin to pray for you, I can literally see weeds, vines crawling up on the side, trying to hold you down. My God in heaven. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. And weeds and vines are the ultimate goal is to kill, to choke out the life, the vitality of uh, the thing that it is surrounding. And I don't know who I don't know exactly what it is, Miss Tabby, but I'm seeing even as I see that vision, I want you to be aware and I need you to be discerning concerning who these people are and what these situations are. These vines, these weeds that are coming out to try to choke energy, to try to drain you of energy, try to choke the vision out of you. I need you to be aware of it. OK, so, Father, in Jesus name, I thank you, Father, that you would bless uh, Tabby, I thank you, Father, that you give her keen discernment. Yes, God, give her keen discernment so that she is aware of what you have done and what you are doing in her life. God, thank you that you would give her a laser beam focus and cause her to be keenly discerning, God, concerning uh, the enemy that would try to come against her life. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Father. I bless you. 
Yes, God, I give you glory in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. I want to speak this over every person. What we talked about in this broadcast today, we talked about being overlooked and talked about being ostracized. I want to say this to every person. Listen, word curses are real. It's so vitally important, family, that you allow you do not allow yourself to be pulled into negative conversations, that you don't allow yourself to keep being an open target for people to constantly spit negative words at you. You've got to disconnect from these people because listen, some people, listen, you know, the old adage, hurting people hurt people. And so people who are hurting, people who are not delivered, people who are full of mess and junk, and envy and strife. And the Bible says wherever envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And because some people have not put in the work to get deliverance, some people have not put in the work consistently to get themselves completely spiritually, emotionally, and mentally healed, their soul wounds can infect you. And so it's important, family, that you don't allow yourself to continue to be infected. How many people, if you ever had COVID-19, you ain't going to never put yourself in a position again to get infected by COVID-19? Listen, I had it. I'm telling you, I thought I was going to die. Okay. I've never been that sick in all my life. I've been a football player. I've had multiple injuries. I've had broken ribs. I've had a bruised spleen. I've had blood transfusions. I've had all kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, that horrible strain, COVID-19, that I, that thing, I was sicker than I've ever been in my life. Okay? That thing almost took me out of here. And I got I to gotta say this. Watch this. I got to say this, Zani, that if you continue to allow negative people to speak negatively in your ear, sending you nasty messages, they never, ever, ever send you anything positive. Don't you notice that negative people don't ever have anything positive to say? And even if they do say something positive, it always has a negative spin with it. Like they'll say stuff like this, Tabby. They'll say stuff like this, uh, Prophetess Clarice. They'll say, oh, girl, you look good today. Oh, you look good today. I don't know what's up with them shoes, though, but everything else you got on look not look nice. They always got to have some kind of negative spin with it. And then they'll try to pretend like they're joking. But reality is, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the things that are in your heart, your mouth will speak. So when you are speaking anything, Marsha, that has a negative spin, I already know that that's coming from your heart. You can try to act like you're playing and joking, but the devil is a lie and his cousins. You meant that thing. You meant that. Oh, you look, oh, you look good today, girl, for a change. Where's that coming from? Bruh, all right, I see you. I see you, bro. Okay, it's about time you finally got something good put on that you're looking good today. Be careful of those people. Be careful of those people. Listen, I'm tuning them out. I found myself, I've been guilty. Can I confess my mess? I've been guilty that my pastoral heart has always wanted to include people. And because I've been so often rejected and overlooked throughout my life, especially throughout my childhood and even in my young adult life in ministry, I've been so rejected and overlooked that I found myself uh, uh, wanting to embrace everybody because I know what it's like to be left out. So I found myself wanting to embrace everybody. But guess what we can't do? You can't embrace everybody. Because everybody doesn't have the same spirit and everybody isn't willing to walk in love toward you. So while we are obligated by God to love everybody, we are not obligated to walk with everybody. And we ain't got to let everybody walk with us. Some people in 2022, and I'm already moving in this vein, 2022, they ain't going to be a part of my camp. Mm -mm, They ain't going to be rocking with me. Never say anything positive. They wait for something to go wrong. They wait for you to make a mistake. And then they're sending you a nasty message or they're doing something nasty or they're sending you some long, drawn out, horrific email that leaves you hurt and leaves you second guessing yourself. And it's like out of all the multitudinous times that they've been around you when you did something good, they never had nothing to say. But as soon as something doesn't go right or it's something that you do or say isn't in their favor, then now they got something negative to say. They downright attack you with their words. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. 
All right. Let those people go on and stay in a negative camp. Let them find their nasty, negative, toxic tribe somewhere else. This one right here. I'm not the one. Love you. Mean it. Come on, Tiffany, help me preach separation for elevation. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you. I bless you and honor you, Lord God. Thank you for your blessing on Tabby's life. Thank you for strengthening her for your assignment. And thank you, Lord God, for keen uh, discernment and prophetic insight for the call, the assignment on her life, Father, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for Prophet Judah. I bless you for his life and his wife, Patsy. I speak blessings of increase over their lives, Father, in Jesus name. Thank you for clarity, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, I pray for the anointing of prosperity on my brother's hands. Thank you that he is a giver. And because he is a giver, because he works so hard and so diligent, God, to bless others, God, that you are sending others to bless him in this season. Thank you, Father, for the harvest that's coming to he and his wife, Patsy, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my God. I thank you for the harvest. Thank you for the harvest, God. And thank you for giving him great favor in all legal matters as well, God, in the name of Jesus. I bless you, Lord God. I honor you, God. I give you glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for Tiffany as well, God. I pray your blessings on Tiffany. Yes, Miss Tiffany, I just heard the spirit of God say this, that 2022 is a year of expansion for you. Write that in the chat, Tiffany. My 2022 my year of expansion, 2022, my year of expansion, 2022, my year of expansion. God is saying, Tiffany, he's bringing you into a year of expansion. Now, this is going to require a greater level of discipline, Tiffany, a greater level of discipline, because see, at every level, whether it's you getting physically fit, whether it's you going back to school and getting a degree, whether it's you just going online and getting a certification, um, or even if it's something as simple as doing a 30 minute or a one hour broadcast right here on Facebook, um, what you have to do is be disciplined enough to put your content together so that you can be successful. All right. So discipline is a must. I need a few people to drop that in the chat. Discipline is a must. Self-discipline is a must. Self-discipline is a must. Self-discipline is a must. So listen, let me say this, uh, Miss Tiffany. So Miss Tiffany, I know we've never met before. I know we've never had a conversation, but I just heard this for you, Miss Tiffany. This is a season of expansion for you. And God is saying it as you exercise the discipline. Yes. Thank you. Holy Spirit of God. Thank you. As you exercise the discipline, Miss Tiffany, for the assignment that God has given you, he is going to literally open doors for you to expand. My God in heaven, expansion. Yes, God, expansion, 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 expansion. Bless you, Daniela. <sighs> so get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. God is opening up some major doors. Now, listen, y'all, we're coming back tonight. Those of you that are on the East Coast time zone, I'm going to ask y'all to either take a nap or y'all have to catch us on Thursday. All right. I'm coming on a little bit later tonight. Uh, we'll be on at 1.30 a.m. Normally we're on at 12 midnight. Tonight we're going to be from 1.30 a.m. to 3 a.m. From 1.30 a.m. to 3 a.m. We'll be back on tonight for third watch prayer for us. All right. So make sure that you set your alarm clocks if you want to join us. If not, it's OK. We'll be back at our regular time at midnight on Thursday, midnight Eastern, 11 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. on the West Coast. Tonight this is a special night. Tonight will be a special night. We're going to be on at 1.30 a.m. Eastern. That's 12.30 Central and that's uh, 10.30 on the West Coast. All right. Uh, we'll be right back here for third watch prayer force. All right, family, it's going to be a powerful time of prayer and sharing of the word. All right. So I love you. Abundant blessings to you in Jesus name and uh, set your alarm clocks to come back and join us for third watch. All right. Blessings on your family. We'll see you a little bit later. God bless.